So uh, we're going to talk about um, another type of reaction with in one D column, which is option desorption. Um, and actually, it's very similar to surface complexation, but except it's um, much easier chemical or simple chemical systems that I can write these expressions for retardation factor or things like that. Um, so it's really to illustrate the general principles. But if you want to look at um, how surface complexation, if you want to think about how surface com complexation will be behaving in these different systems, essentially it will be like, here I'm talking about one equation, but uh, in surface complexation system, you will be talking multiple um, uh, equations with different species. So it's, it's, it's different, but it's also similar in its principles. So I'm going to just using this example again that have um, 1D column again. You notice sometimes I, I draw vertically, sometimes I draw horizontally. When I draw horizontally, usually um, I can indicate this as uh, so things that the conceptual figure in my mind is that's what happened in the groundwater system. Typically you have horizontal flow or ladder flow. Um, so let's say we have a we have a um, sobbing ch um, chemical going through the system, which is different from the non-reacting tracer before. So this is um, let's call maybe maybe a, an organic material. Let's call it OR. Okay, so it going through the system. It's going to attach to some of the solid phase. Um, in the process media, so if, when you think about the processes that it goes through, again, it will have the advection process, which is not surprising, and then dispersion and advection, uh, di diffusion. But again, there's this sobbing reaction happening, right? So let's say we have the solid phase not really solid, it's like the sobbing organic matter is in exchange with the species in the water phase, right? So now usually we think about sorption, desorption, or like surface complexation, these reactions tend to occur very fast um, or thermodynamic controlled. So it's different from mineral dissolution precipitation. We talk about these reaction rates, uh, reaction rate laws um, here, because they happen very fast, we consider they, are, um, they have algebraic relationship between the solid phase concentration and aqueous phase uh, concentration. So um, the, the, the expression between like how it governs, how it's different from the previous one is here you have essentially algebraic relationship instead of rate law uh, n equals to kd concentration. So this C is aqueous concentration. This is a solid concentration. This is concentration on solid. How much it's solved on the solid phase. And it could be in the units of, for example, mass, p mass of this chemical species per mass of solid phase or per volume of solid phase. There are different units of that. Um, but here, so, so, but as long as they are consistent. So the KD, what we call, this is an, we call linear isosome. linear system system. So it's the simplest sorption isosome you can get. There's, non, there's, there's no non-linearity here. So there's KD. This KD is called um, sorption coefficient. You can imagine if you have large values of KD, this chemical species tend to sorb on the solid phase a lot. If it's small, it doesn't sorb on solid phase much. Right, so again, here we only would have only have one species, 
which is much simpler than the multiple um, species we talk about in other units about for example mineral distribution or complexations. Now, um, so how is this different? How is this different from the non-reactive tracer? So here you have a species that actually sobbing on solid phase. So in the previous one, when we talk about AD reaction, AD equations that involve non-reactive tracer, the solid phase does not have that chemical species, right? It does not, does not solve on solid phase. So um, um, actually we can derive the equation of sobbing species based on the non-reacting one and, and this relationship, but I'm not going to go through detail of that. I'm going to just give you the expression of that which would be, actually everything else will be the same, You all these terms that we talked about before, but we'll, there will be one more extra term in front of this, which is one plus one minus phi over phi, and then you have rho, which is density of a solid phase, you have Kd. Okay, so you imagine that you, all these, con, um, e for each term, the units need that to, need to be consistent, right? So this is dimension is, these should be the units of these should cancel out, and for depends on how this isosome coefficient are defined, you will have different um, type of units, but eventually they should cancel out. So so this term remain um, dimensionless, but essentially what this. Um, we, we, what this tell you is, for example, if you think about this, if this is a constant, right, if given a particular process media, you would have the same porosity, how much space you have, you would have the same density of solid phase, and this is a property of the zombing material, so if you have the same uh, zombing species, you should have the same value, so this is a constant that we call abstract, that abstract, which is retardation factor. Now because it's constant and it does change, it does not change with time x, uh, t and x, which means we can potentially divide each term by this, so you would actually have an equivalent um, an equivalent equation would be this, but you would have minus u and then divided by epsilon, partial c, partial x, plus d, again, here are the same, and then again divided by this epsilon. I essentially move this to uh, the other term. Now, what are the effects of that is, again, let's think about a uh, pulse of injection of some chemicals or, right, so let's say the very sharp injection, which is so you would imagine, let's say you are, you are injecting this organic material um, but also at the same time you are injecting a non-reactive tracer to compare it with as a reference, right? So in these two systems, in this, how would these two different chemicals behave when you think about, okay, they inject at the same time, one is sobbing, the other is not sobbing, right? And also actually based on this equation, what can they tell you? So I'm just going to draw something. Right, so this is the kind of changing infection of time. So we are really looking at here. And we're cracking samples, water sample, and, and measure the contrition. We crack sample at different time and measure the contrition at, at different time. So you can think about how, which, like, I already put this, right? You, there's, a pro, uh, there's a pulse of chemical goes in, so there should be another pulse coming out, and they should be coming out at different time. And which one should coming out 
first and which one should come out later? Is that the non-reacting one going to come out first or is the sobbing material going to come out first, right? So um, while you are thinking I'm drawing this, We, we talk about it with a pose you have at some point when it come out, it'll be looking kind of like that, if it's a homogeneous medium, right? And there's another one. They're supposed to have the same width and everything. I'm probably not drawing this very correctly. But anyway, this, if you think about that, compare the two species, right? So one that should come out fast is a non-reacting one. If you think about uh, non-sorbing, this will be the non-sorbing species. Because it's not going to go on the solid phase, take its time, come out again. But for the sorbing species, once they get into the process media, it's um, in contact with the solid phase, it's going to go into a solid phase first. Right, and then it will be kind of in equilibrium. Um, at some point, then it will become out again. So, so sobbing species will have will spend some time to interact with a solid phase. So and so that delays the whole process of freshing out. So if we think about this, we call that T sobbing species, and this is. just the chaser, so it's non-sobbing. This thing let's just call this R. If we are doing this experiment, measuring these and drawing these figures, your, your, you actually can calculate this optional value or retardation factor is equals to this time of the sobbing species, the peak of sobbing species versus the time of non-sobbing. And this is actually how people measure the retardation factor in, in lab system. So um, essentially what the sobbing species does is to delay the process of coming up, coming out of the system. And actually, more or less, you can expect in this, right? Because it's solving the U or the velocity of, appears as if it's slower because this retardation factor is almost always larger than. If it's equal to one, then it's essentially as a non-reacting tracer. So it really should be larger than one. And so it's, it's going to be slower than the solving, than the non-solving one, than the tracer. Okay, so that's the effect of the retardation factors, option, and everything. If you think about um, complexation, surface so complexation, it's essentially um, very similar behavior, except that you will need to deal with multi component system, and usually that's pH dependent, and uh, the solid phase tend to have hydrogen ion, these sobbing um, sides that are pH dependent. So. Um, I'm, go I'm not going to into these complexity and details. You can look at um, some of the material online.